What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Humphrey Yang and I make videos on personal finance and entrepreneurship. Today's video is all about how I've managed to track every single expense for the past six years. I'm not just talking about discretionary spending or just tracking some fixed expenses like rent and mortgage. I'm talking about tracking every single transaction efficiently and effectively for the past six years. Now, usually when people find out that I track every single expense, they usually think I'm crazy. They think that there's not enough time in the day to do that or they just think I'm gonna miss a bunch of expenses here and there. Well, I'm telling you now, genuinely, I track every single expense, I haven't missed a thing, and as a result, I've been able to budget more efficiently. I'm still motivated to do it to this day, and I'm gonna explain exactly how I do this in today's video. So in today's video, I'm gonna break this down into two sections. First is the why I track every expense, and second is how I've managed to track every expense for the past six years. So let's tackle the why first. And the first reason of why I wanna do this is that I would like to have a deep, intimate knowledge of where my money is going and to be more conscious of my spending in general. By being conscious of my spending in general, I bring more awareness as to where my money is going and that's gonna prevent me from making senseless purchases that I might regret later on. When I'm tracking and inputting everything into my tracker, what I've noticed is that every purchase gets a little bit more consideration from me. So I really think that it's a good idea because now my money is gonna be more purposeful. And if it's purposeful, I'm gonna be able to allocate that money a lot better over long periods of time. The second reason why I really like doing this is that I can identify the trends in my spending a lot easier. One of the things I wanna guard against is lifestyle inflation. And if you are familiar with what that is, it's basically as your salary rises, people tend to spend more money. Now, it's just a natural thing that occurs. It's like, okay, I was making $4,000, but now I'm making $5,000. You personally just think that you have a thousand more dollars to spend in that month. And what I really wanna guard against because I've experienced it in the past, when I get a raise or I increase my income, for example, I've noticed that I tend to spend more money and by tracking your expenses, you really keep yourself in check. And the third reason why is that I'm able to maximize the budget that I do make for myself. Basically, by knowing how much you spend and knowing how much income is coming in, you're gonna know exactly how much you have to work with in terms of discretionary spending or any spending just for leisure or for fun. So for example, by doing this method, you might be able to take yourself on a nice dinner, you might be able to go on a really nice vacation for the weekend, or maybe just do something a little bit for yourself and not feel too guilty about it. So those are my personal reasons for why I track my expenses. It might be different for everybody, but I find that being able to save more money or to spend more money in places where you want to is generally a pretty good idea. Now let me tell you how it is I'm actually able to track every single expense for the past six years, and I'm gonna break it down into five key sections. The first section is to remove your ego from the equation completely. I would say it's also the number one reason as to why people give up on tracking their expenses is because they're kind of ashamed or they feel guilty about the type of expenses that might happen over the course of a week or a month. Now this was difficult for me when I first started tracking my expenses in 2014, I was really just not in a good place. I didn't wanna know how much I spent on a P.F. Chang's dinner or a Mandy Moore CD. It was just embarrassing for me. I didn't wanna to have to see it reminding me on a digital screen or wherever you track your expenses. For me, it's a digital screen, but I just didn't wanna see that, you know, kind of staring me in the face. So the mindset that works best for me is that I kinda of tell myself, listen, Humphrey, I know you're gonna spend money no matter what. So if you are gonna spend money, let's at least track where it's going so that we can identify those trends and those spending habits early on and make adjustments to them in the future so that maybe you can spend a little bit less or you can spend a little bit more on the things that you wanna do. And after a while, I'd say three months for me, I just learned to completely disassociate my own spending with guilt and embarrassment. I know that it's wishful thinking and you might actually be watching this and you're like, man, I could never do that. But trust me, if you do it long enough and consistently enough that that kind of feeling of guilt and embarrassment with your spending, that association slowly goes away. So now let's get into how I exactly track my expenses. And I use an app in the iTunes store called Spending Tracker. And I've been using this for the past six years. It's a completely free app, but basically what you have to do is you have to enter in every single expense manually. And I actually prefer this. I enter in everything I spend almost immediately after I spend that money. So let's say I'm at a coffee shop and I spend $5. 
While I'm waiting for that coffee, I'll just hop into my app, enter in $5 and categorize it as coffee. Now the app has a bunch of different categories and you can also even create your own categories within the app to track your own expenses. I've used other apps that automatically track your expenses before like mint.com and Truebill, but what I've really found is that the automated method of tracking your expenses is never as good as the manual process and that's just a personal kind of preference. I really wanna be able to see how much I'm spending with cash, how much I'm spending with one account, how much I'm spending with another credit card. I like it all in one place. Now Mint sometimes misses out on the cash. Obviously you can't really account for cash. So this is the main reason why I got the spending tracker is because I do tend to use cash sometimes. I know that people think cash is dead, but I still carry around a lot of cash with me and uh, I use spending tracker for that reason. So what do I actually track? I track everything that's not a monthly recurring expense in my spending tracker. So. Anytime I'm doing any discretionary spending, I'm tracking that in my spending tracker app. And that leads me to my next point, which is it's really good to separate your monthly and your discretionary expenses. The reason why I like to separate them, I'm gonna get into a little bit later, but the reason why I really like tracking your monthly expenses is that if you can get your monthly expense number, so once you figure out what you spend on a monthly basis, just recurring, you can basically figure out how much you need to make just to break even on your monthly expenses. And by knowing that number, I think that's a really powerful number to target and it's a really good way to set goals for yourself in terms of your income. So for me, monthly expenses can be categorized as anything that recurs every single month, such as rent, car payments, gym memberships, subscriptions, and so on and so forth. So think about it, let's say you make $4,000 a month and without knowing for sure, you spend about $2,000 a month on your monthly expenses. Well, you go through the process of actually tracking your monthly expenses and you find that, hey, I only spent $1,800 in recurring expenses this month. Well, guess what? That's an extra $200 that you have to kind of work with in your budget now for other things that might not even be monthly expenses. So basically I track monthly expenses in a Google spreadsheet and I track discretionary expenses in my spending tracker app. And at the end of every month, I combine the two to get a total landscape of how the month went. On the 31st or the 30th of each month, I like to review what I spent my money on, what categories I spent my money on and how I can do better for the next month. Let's say I did like the month, then I don't have to change anything for the next month. But the idea is that once you start to identify trends and do this for a long enough period of time, you're gonna understand exactly where your money's going and how you can make adjustments on the fly. So that is my fourth section. It is basically summarizing, analyzing your own spending data and making improvements as you see fit because this is a plan for you. I can tell you guys that when I started tracking my expenses, I was spending close to two, 2.5K a month in discretionary spending. And once I started to track my expenses and really see where my money was going, I could cut back on the things that I didn't really actually need. That resulted in me actually saving 500 to $800 more per month just by tracking my expenses and kind of understanding where the money was going and being more critical of my spending habits. And the fifth section that I think everybody should do when they track their spending for a long period of time is to actually reward yourself. I think if you are tracking your expenses, it's great to reward yourself as an incentive to keep going. So if you track your expenses for a month, I like to reward myself with, let's say a nice sushi dinner, about 30 to $40 on my own, because my philosophy is listen, if I'm tracking every single expense for the month, I'm actually preventing lifestyle inflation. And by doing so, I'm saving myself so much more money in the long run that paying myself to a nice dinner for $30 isn't gonna be that bad. So yeah, I definitely think rewarding yourself is a key part of this plan because tracking your expenses is hard, especially if you're new and it takes a lot of discipline. My last caveat is that with one-time purchases, especially large one-time purchases, I like to put those in my Google spreadsheet because I don't want them to be in my running total of discretionary spending. And the reason for that is pretty simple. I don't wanna be demoralized every time I open up my spending tracker and see that, oh my God, this month I've already spent $2,000 when really, in fact, most of that money was coming from one one-time big purchase. So basically I just enter that into a separate line in my Google spreadsheet and I just look at it at the end of the month instead of always having to be reminded of that purchase during the month. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna to link to my own Google spreadsheet in the description below and you guys can feel free to make a copy of it and use it for yourself. I think that it's a really good resource and it's gonna be absolutely free. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more content from me. If you do track your expenses or you have any tips for the community to track your expenses, please leave them in the comments. I love reading and replying to every single one of your comments. That's it from me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.